Mark on. Thank you for tuning in this weekend. Of course, we are all doing this to uh, to raise awareness and support Mind, which is such a, a phenomenal charity, um, which is, I guess, even more to the fore in this crazy year that is 2020. Um, but yeah, as you can see, join us here. This is our, our I believe it's labelled as Horror Icons panel. We have Mr. Derek Mears. We have Mr. Tyler Main. Gentlemen, how are you doing? First of all, oh, actually, actually, it's a matter. Oh, first and foremost, um, thank you for giving up your time to join us. Uh, and secondly, yeah, how are you doing? Pleasure. Good to be here, man. Good to be here. Super happy and awake to be here. Uh, 9 a.m. California time. Very happy. That's a strong That's a strong coffee there you've got, isn't it? Totally. I got my, my uh, strong D&D tea. Then nerd it out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Derek will be a part of our D&D stream and it's happening tomorrow night as well. Just that's a, a nice nice way to throw that in there. <laughs> um, yeah. nicely done nicely done I, I see what you're doing there i, I accidentally had the D mug clearly um, but uh, how, uh, how how are things in 2020 before we get into all the good stuff because it's been such a, a nut year for everybody but how, how are you guys doing with this tyler fire away buddy it's shit <laughs> <laughs> That's it. The panel's ended. That is nailed it perfectly. That's, That's all you need to hear. Yeah, you know, I, I just can't wait for this to be over, you know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, hey, it's, it's given us some time to do some writing and get some stuff on track, you know, yeah. through my company and that. And But it's just, it's, uh, you know, without being able to do the conventions and see the fans, it's kind of, it's it's been a, a crazy, crazy year, you know? And uh, it's just, uh, it, it's unbelievable how that COVID has taken over the world and shut everything down, you know? Mm. But a uh, good thing they got vaccines coming, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's trying to stay positive. Yeah, the, I myself, I've, it's, I've done a lot more video games. Uh, my social media uh, screen time has gone up by jillions of percents. I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> accurate. But uh, I love hearing like Tyler and everyone's getting things done and being productive. And I'm basically being a high school student going, like, yeah, let me know when it's all done. I'm going to play uh, Sackboy. Cool. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, people might not know this. Um, and I only found this out from when I spoke to Derek, as we talked about um, a couple of years ago, that you two are like a, a good buddies. Um, so how did this friendship come about of these two big, burly, hulking behemoths of men? How, how did this friendship form? I, I think we were audition a lot for the same things back way back in the days and we just run into each other and stuff. And then uh, um, ended up, we were living real close to each other. So we just started hanging out all the time. And, you know, it's just, uh, it's just been crazy. You know, we, we finally got to work together. Yes. I, uh, kind of suckered Derek into working with me <laughs> on one of our projects but uh yeah you know I mean it's uh we're, we're family we're family absolutely absolutely uh, the, the first time I ever saw Tyler I was so new to Hollywood and, and Tyler was established we were at an audition together was it, was it like a, one of those like, like, a, like a weird like kickboxer sequel like one of those like weird <laughs> and before I started like training heavy and like putting size on I remember sitting in the waiting room going okay, I'm a little nervous. I'm new to this. Like, you know, auditioning. I mean, okay, I think I got a good shot. And all of a sudden, like, the room kind of shakes. This guy comes in, a just gigantic, like, fit, like, just energy that fills the room. Like, hey, everybody, what's going on? Cool. And they rolled out the red carpet for him. They're like, Mr. Main, come on in, come on in. They go, oh, that's the guy I would cast. Okay. And he's <laughs> in the room. You hear this, like, he was so soft-spoken. But when he's in the room just sound terrifying. And when he came out of the room, tons of huge dudes are, are waiting to go in. And a lot of dudes aren't making eye contact with Tyler at all. And he's just so mellow and calm. And he just had this present. I'm like, that dude's cool. And years later, you know, we would say hi or whatever, but then we became really good friends. And now he's like a brother to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I remember when I first moved up to uh, uh, the area where you live in Santa Cruz, mm -hmm. and I saw you teaching a martial arts class with my kids. Yeah, yeah. I walk by and I go, holy shit, that's Derek. And you came out and, and, and introduced yourself to my kids and stuff. And that was really cool. Remember that? Yeah, I totally do. Yeah, you're outside the window. And I, I was teaching. We had all those big plain uh, glass windows, like in a shopping mall. And like this presence walks by and I'm like, are the students safe? Like, oh, no, it's, it's Tyler. Cool. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I know that guy. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> it is funny when if, if fans ever see us hanging out together, either they get excited thinking we're gonna do like a, a Freddy versus or, or, or uh, Jason versus Michael uh, uh, fight movie or something, or they they're not fans. They think we're like running drugs or part of like Sons of Anarchy or something. <laughs> it's it's nuts to see how like how you two have, have come together and. Obviously, you two are these huge names in in like in the horror industry, in the horror genre. But like the the backgrounds you have, I mean, like you touched it there with uh, Tyler touched it with Derek about how it's like martial arts training, and, and you, you kind of came in with stunts and improv comedy. And then on the other side of that, you got Tyler who came in as a wrestler. And I love the fact that, that you came in as a wrestler uh, briefly, I believe, through Stu Hart's Dungeon. It, which, if that's yeah. true, then oh uh, yeah, as a as a whole Calgary Alberta fanboy uh, and the heart in particular hearts. Yeah, That's like yeah. tick, tick, tick. Um, so you got this wrestler, you got this martial artist and improv comedian and they just become buddies. It's, it's, <laughs> it feels like this should be like a buddy, a buddy movie, a buddy, a role buddy movie sort of thing. <laughs> I would be down for that 1000%. Yeah, there you go. But um, just to, to circle in on that, because I, I have to ask, if I don't ask, I'll be forever slapping myself across the face. Um, that, that, c- coming in, like going through the dungeon, uh, no matter how briefly it was, or, or hanging around with the hearts. And then obviously, because your, your wrestling career, uh, people may not realize that this away from the movies is it was, you did well. There was, there was New Japan, there was Old Japan, there was CMML, uh, there was, uh, of course, going through Canada. And then there was WCW, which if people do know you from wrestling, that's probably where they know you from. So, um, I, how, how was the whole wrestling thing? And was that, was that your first love, I take it? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, as a kid growing up, uh, I'd watch the hearts all the time, you know? So then I, I ended up going, for, I lived in Saskatoon. So I would drive every weekend to the hearts, which was like uh, about eight hours before I started wow. finally moved there. And Stu realized that I was serious about it. And I, I didn't, I, at that time, I, I didn't know anything about the jun- dungeon at all, you know? And so he invited me over there for breakfast and he was like, eh, <laughs> uh, kid, uh, c- come with me, kid. And we walked down the stairs and the ceiling was so low. I'm like, how are you going to suplex somebody in here? Oh, kid, uh, you got to learn a lot before we get to suplex people. And he goes, uh, let me show you a double grapevine. Oh, man. He slapped that on, but he'd test you to make sure you really yeah. wanted to be there, which yeah. was really cool. You know, that back in the day, you, you know, you had to go through a little bit to get, it's, get I, in. I imagine it as well, because I, as well as being a horror nerd, I'm a massive wrestling nerd. In fact, just up there is um, the Bret Hart winged eagle belt sort of thing I'm on the top of my shelf. Oh, yeah, Huge yeah. wrestling nerd. So, yeah, yeah it's like. You hear all these stories about uh, about Stu Hart wanting to test people, and especially the big boys, and and you two certainly are the big boys. So I guess he probably would have saw you, Ty, and just thought, yeah, I can't wait to get him down. This kind of must have been maybe 70 years old at the time, this old guy. It's like, yeah, I can't wait to get him down and just just tear him apart, really, in, in all these kind of holds. But, you know, I mean, he, he, was, he was the best, man. He would teach you things, and, and it was... For real, man. It was it was the old days style, you know. Yeah, yeah. Which was which was really cool. I, I mean, I even wrestled uh, in Leeds there with really? uh, uh, Big Daddy. Wow, I did not know that. I did not know that yeah. at all. Wow. Yeah, I wrestled. I wrestled him several times. Another big dude. It's like, see, I, I knew WCW stuff. I did my research with Japan, but I didn't. I didn't even think to look at the, the UK. I, I feel, yeah, yeah. yeah there, there was a, a I, for a while. I, there, there was a pay per view I'd on. Um, I'm sure it was one of the Starcades. I'm not sure. There was one of the WCW ones I had on the other day, and it's like, oh, let's Tyler Main go into the ring with his big hair, looking mean and nasty. Uh, I, I, I try to think which paper it was, but it was just like, oh, that's that's cool. Um, that, that's really cool. Um, and with well, how did for both of you then? How did what you were doing beforehand, whether it's wrestling, whether it was the martial arts stuff and, and the stunts, how did that go into um, transition to to actual acting? Uh, actually, on, on my end, I've, I've always been an actor. Uh, it, it was um, in school, I started off doing improv, and that led me into doing uh, theater and, and doing plays and whatnot and training. And when I moved to Hollywood, uh, my first audition was for a Wild 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 West stunt show at Universal. So uh, they took stunt people and cross-trained them to act, and they, could, they took uh, actors and cross-trained them to do stunts. And so as an actor, 
and they cross trained me there to learn the stunts. And I just became friends with a lot of the stunt guys. So I picked up some of the, uh, I, had, I, started, uh, I had a background in martial arts as well. So I started training, I'm going, wait, if I worked out, I could be like the big bad guy in TV and film. But there are two different roads, which is one occupation's acting and one stunts. And people will go, oh, you're a stunt guy, you tr- transferred over. Or they don't, they have a hard time separating. Also Hollywood does too. So it got to the point, uh, like about nine years ago, I kind of stopped doing stunts, though I still have the skill set. Uh, because they they don't think you can do both things, but it's tons of people can. So that's my kind of lead up to this. Tyler, you're yeah, we'll stand to you, Tyler. Come on, Tyler. <laughs> For me, I you know I, I did the wrestling, but I always wanted to to be an actor. You know, it was like a, the wrestling was a stepping stone, and it was good training. I was never really a stunt man. Per se. I was never hired to do stunts, but I was hired as the guy that could do the fight scenes and stuff like that. I draw the line like I, I will not fall off of a building and I will not get lit on fire. So, you know, I'll do just about anything else. Um, so, so, I mean, that's how I got going in it. And then I started taking the, the acting seriously and taking some classes and stuff like that. And, and just uh, it's evolved into what it is. Yeah, I'm also really happy this Tyler's a pal of mine. It's it's so fun seeing Tyler's journey. A lot of times when like because Tyler's such a large gentleman that they want to put him in a certain box where it's like, oh, we need big guy. And I'm like, no, he can actually act and he also can do the physical side of things. He's really, really good. And so I'm happy now that especially with himself uh, making his own uh, production company Mm. and making his own opportunities and giving himself some dramatic roles and some meat on them. And he's knocking out of the ballpark. Which I'm mean, like, cheers to you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's almost like you're reading my mind there. My next question was going to be as these two physically imposing chaps, is, does it get, I don't know, do you find yourself being a little bit pigeonholed into obviously that certain roles we need this this big, gnarly looking son of a gun? So, right, Derek Mears, Tyler Mayne, they're two good guys for that. Or we need this, um, this, this, whatever, this relentless beast of a killer. Uh, it, is that, is that a very much a real thing that that stereotyping, that pigeonholing, that typecasting? Yeah, you know, I mean, well, for me, the kiss of death is like when you walk into an audition room and they look at you and they go, "How tall are you? you how <laughs> tall are you? <laughs> you just know." Thanks. I'll see you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But no, I mean, it helps with some things and, and, and with some things, you know, it, 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 uh, it hurts, but uh, it is what it is, you know, and you just got to make the best of what you have, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, 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 I need a coffee, Derek. <laughs> I'll be right over. Well, what time are you guys on at the moment? Are you in the same time zone at least? No. No, no. I, I moved to Atlanta full time, so I'm in Atlanta. It's uh twelve sixteen here now. Yeah, mine's like it's, it's I'm three hours uh, uh so it's nine sixteen here, so I'm just playing around. I'm fine. I'm yeah, I, yeah, I was getting worried I think that we got these poor guys off at like silly o'clock in the morning, like half oh, <laughs> like that would just ruining your day just to come and join us and give it your time. Um but I mean, you guys have been in, involved in so many, uh, so many different movies, um, and I guess we have to get to the elephant in the room, the really hulking, murderous uh, elephants in the room of obviously Derek yourself as as Jason Voorhees in the Friday Thirteenth reboot, uh, and Tyler yourself as Michael Myers in Rob Zombie's movies, Halloween movies. Um, what is that like to take on those roles? Because I I know Derek, you were a huge uh, Friday Thirteenth fanboy, but for both of you, is there because these are such kind of huge characters in the history of horror, the history of pop culture, history of cinema. Is there, is it more excitement or is it like that nervousness and that trepidation of like, oh God, this is, what am I getting myself in for? How, how was it that that realization to, to play these characters? Which seems like a really long way to get around that question. So uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of, it, 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 it's a little bit of both, but the, the, the nervousness comes from kind of like, sliding down a, a, a snowy hill on a sled that you've never been down before and you know the bottom's down there but you don't know exactly what's going to come up on the way so once you commit it that there's no stopping that that's that forward momentum um on my end it, it, 
it's actually a really, it's an honor because I'm a huge horror fan and I'm having to play so many different iconic characters that I get the opportunity to take other people's expectations and relationships with that character and put my own spin on them, but also be respectful from what they're expecting and what their loves are. So for me, I, I always say I'm a fan representing the fans and I get to, you know, try to, since they're such iconic characters, we're not going to be the last character people or actors playing them. So our job is to keep that, you know, character alive and, you know, the zeitgeist of, uh, I, I, I Connery, I guess it's not even, that's not even good English. I Connery. Uh, uh, I can offer three, possibly. The next guy. Yeah. I Connery? Hi, I watched the video of Derek and he's an idiot. I Connery. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Tyler, save me and say something. For, for me, uh, you know, I, I kind of go into stuff blind like that. I, I mean, I, I'd known of the Michael Myers, and I, but I didn't really realize how big it was until, you know, it starts appearing online and stuff. And, oh, this guy's going to start playing. And you're know, like, holy shit, what did I get into? You know? And then you just try and do the very best you can to, to make it the best character you can do and, and, and bring something new to the role and hopefully take it to the next level. You know? So... It's uh, and and that was the same way. Like when I did Sabretooth, I I you know I knew of it, but you didn't know the fan base was so huge, you know, and and uh, for for both of those, so it's it, it it's kind of daunting, you know, when you put that suit on for the first time and you pick up that knife and you're like, oh shit, I'm Michael Myers, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, uh, it's I guess well. You you had to follow on from like the last time people had seen Michael was he was getting like bitch slapped around by Buster Rhymes in Halloween Resurrection. So it's like, <laughs> like yeah, you, you, you're the guy that has to pick that up. It's like, that's the bat on your past. Obviously it's all, it's all different because it's Rob Zombie's movies, but that was the last image people had was, was Kung Fu and Buster Rhymes. It's like, <sighs> yeah. well, we changed that's that so a little bit, you know? So, but it's, but it's okay. Yeah. Well, okay. And, you know, and like Derek said, you know, I, I'm not the last person to play the character. He, they have moved on and people would always ask me if I'm upset about it. I'm like, heck no. Cause I mean, I always wanted to do something more than I did with the last film. And, and everybody yeah. kept asking me like, Oh, would you play him for a third time? And I'm like, I wouldn't know what to do. I'd have to rip somebody's head off or something. <laughs> You know, you want to step it up more, you know, and it's not so. So I'm, I'm kind of, I'm glad I passed the torch, and I've moved on to other things, you know, and 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 Derek has too. I mean, the swamp thing, man, that's oh, dude, yes. that's that's insane stuff, you know. Thank you. When I when I first found out that he was going to be the swamp thing, I was like, oh, that's so cool, and then I saw it, and I was just like, oh, holy shit, that's Derek, you know. Yeah. I know him. I know him. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like for, I, you know? I know this guy. I know this guy. He's he's my buddy. It, I yeah. think it was one of those and, and and actually, you know, because I just ended up doing something um, for Netflix where I had to. I called Derek and I was like, "Hey, man, I, I don't know what the hell I'm getting myself into here. <laughs> Give me some advice." <laughs> you know? And he gave me great advice, and, and it was it, it would, turned out good so i'm anxiously waiting for that jupiter's legacy to come out so I, that... I believe so yeah we've we've got tomorrow night our headline app is or well, before dungeons and dragons is mark miller who created jupiter's legacy um oh, is it, cool. i know with him yeah so that's a nice nice boy that's a nice plug so tomorrow night i think it's like seven o'clock 7 p.m we have mark miller it's great it's great uh it is it has been pre-recorded so i've already seen it and it was really fun um but yeah, Derek, with the the, the Swamp Thing thing, uh, just to mm -hmm. follow on from Tyler there, it was one of those where, yeah, it was it was it, it was so cool, um, and I hope that it some I gets more life somewhere down the line. But it was one of those where it kind of once it was announced that you you were cast in that role, it's like, of course, this makes perfect sense. This is this is the, the uh, going from like the stuff you were Pirates of the Caribbean from uh, Dead Snow Two, Red versus Dead, all these things of like the, the the guy who has that presence. And he's used to prosthetics. It's like, of course, this is like 
the obvious choice to play Swamp Thing. Um, oh, that's so nice. Yeah, I was so happy when they when I found out that they wanted me for the part. Like, it's just all my my worlds together. And I got to tell you that it, it, it's honestly out of all the different shows I've done over these however many years, it's the best part, the best thing I've ever been a part of because the people in front of the camera and behind the camera have been just phenomenal. And the way that James Wan, our, our, uh, our producer for the show, treats everybody with such kindness and respect, it just trickled down and that's how the entire show was. There's no attitude or pretentiousness and I'm just very thankful to be a part of that in general. Yeah, it's it's it is it's like it's one of those where I think everybody as soon as well it was announced that it wasn't going to be getting a second season. It's like oh, come on! And I think everybody is hoping for that. And yeah, it's doing really well. Uh, it's on our and here in the U.S. It's playing on the CW, which is our regular cable station yeah, now. Yeah. And uh, the what I hear the rumors that the, that the numbers are just through the roof and they're all still positive. So on the internet, I have nothing. I know some people probably tune in to find out what's going on. Um, I don't personally know anything. I'm just reading what I know from the internet and there's rumors that they're trying to figure out how to bring it back or in some way. And I'm like, let me know. Cause it, it kind of <laughs> feels like going on to other projects or and yeah. it's kind of like, you know, it's like dating, but you're pining about, you know, the, the girlfriend that got away the girl that got away going like, Oh yeah. No, no, no. I'm focused on this thing. All right. Oh, she, oh, she did what? what? What does Swamp Thing do? Oh, oh cool. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Is it going well? And she so might want to go back on another date. Maybe. Let me know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Like, <laughs> um, and also, you were over here with Robocop uh, recently on our screens in the UK, which is not <laughs> like, I, I reckon, I know that. I know that, Chin. I know that. Um, how, oh my what God, that's was, so funny. What, like, yeah. how, how did that happen? I'm a child. Uh, I got a call and an <laughs> offer going like, hey, do you want to come to South Africa to shoot? Uh, we're going to do a little mini movie uh, Robocop commercial for the UK for direct line. And I, I me alone, I was like, wait, you're going to Stan Winston Studios or, or, or Legacy Studios now, who does like the Mandalorian, all the Marvel movies. They're going to make me a retro Robocop outfit to go to South Africa to play in. Y yeah. Are you? How? Let's, I'll pack my bags right now. I was just so incredibly happy. So, uh, and the suit, which is beautiful. It's, it, it looks very, it looks very pretty. Um, anytime it pops up, it's like, that's, that's just so cool. And especially uh, knowing, knowing it's you under the hood, as it were. Um, it, it was crazy. The, the first time I also put it on, being so big, because uh, uh, I'm not as big as Mr. Main, uh, I'm like 6'5", uh, 230 pounds. And so when you have the Robocop ro armor on, and you walk into a room, you're so gigantic with the, the accessories. And I'm looking at the mirror going, <laughs> like nerding out, not because it's me, but just a nerd going, whoa, that looks crazy. <laughs> so uh, I forgot that I was playing it. That's, that's great. Uh, and you guys, because Tyler, you mentioned it before about how you, you, well, you have your own production company now, Main Entertainment, and you guys got to work together on Compound Fracture. Um, how, um, obviously with your wife as well, Tyler, uh, how, how was that just to, to properly get to work together in that sort of, as in a day-to-day -day thing, were, were you like, were you still buddies at the end of the days, or was it like that? That Derek oh. is. Oh god. Oh yeah. It. No, no, no. I mean, it was funny how I got Derek into it, you know, because he's, <laughs> he, oh, you're doing a movie. Okay, good, good, good. You know, everybody says they're doing a movie, and he was over at our place, and we were having a few drinks, and I said, uh, "Hey, you want to fight me?" Goes, <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> in a movie. I said, you agreed. <laughs> <laughs> I was tricked. It was a verbal agreement and I was tricked. Yes, and it worked very well. <laughs> but it was funny. I, rem I still remember this today. It's Derek coming to the set the first day. He goes, holy shit. You guys got a jib. You're making a movie. I go, yeah, Derek. What do you think <laughs> we're doing here? Well, he goes, well, I didn't know. I mean, I thought you were just screwing around or something and then <laughs> and then the first time we locked up for our fight scene it was just like it was just you know like when you you, you blend in it's like doing a dance you know he's like yeah. oh, shit he knows what he's doing you know and and we both said that to each other and it's like, okay now we're gonna have some fun and yeah yeah because Todd know? being so big and, and massive sometimes the tendency is guys like when you lock up where you're doing a because with, with stunt fighting as opposed to, to regular fighting it's an elaborate dance 
And a lot of the bigger guys sometimes uh, don't have that finesse. And they'll just kind of like, I'm going to move you. I'm going to do. And Tyler, with his size, he was had so much finesse and agility. And he was such a professional with the way they move. We could, you know, like a dance party, you could feel where their center of weight balance uh, was. And I was just so impressed with all of his work. And also impressed with how he could bounce between doing stuff and handling production side and then hopping back in and getting into the moment of the character and moving forward and learning fights and then going back when I just had to learn my character and that was it. I go, I don't know how you're doing what you were doing because I would lose my mind. Wow, yeah. <laughs> I, that, 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 that's a compliment. I'm just that's... a control freak, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what's been the, the biggest challenge then, Tyler, of... of... So obviously you, you still are acting, but have taken on that side of things of, of the business. What, what have you found to be the biggest challenge? Or it's just been dead easy. It's a, it's a breeze. No, I, I mean, putting projects together and, and, and creating the right team. It's, you know, I've been very lucky to, to be able to work with a lot of my friends and stuff, but the hardest part is the initial convincing uh, company studios or whatever that you're doing it to raise the funds you know and that's like we're working on a tv series that we're doing now called um, the last spartans and um, we've got it partially funded and we're working on that and hopefully going to do the first season of that uh, here in the next year or whenever things really get going again and open up but it's just th that's the hardest part once once you get that ball pushed uphill and you got funding and everything and then that starts going it uh it is seems to all fall into place of course you, you know you got a lot of road bumps and speed bumps along the way but just a few of them yeah. people to work with you like derek you know it's like <laughs> <laughs> again that, that goddamn derek Mays. <laughs> talk to my agent man we'll figure it out <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, there's, there's so much to talk about with both of your careers, but just to, to circle back what you say before, Tyler, about how with Michael, you were happy to, it, you, well, you, not happy, you, were, you knew somebody else was going to take that mantle on, but there was at one point in time, because um, I, I got to speak to Scout Taylor Compton, who was lovely, and she had nothing but good things to say about you, which I probably shouldn't tell you, but no, she was, she was, uh, <laughs> yeah, she had, yeah. You got to pay her now. <laughs> I know, yeah, oh, God. I'm getting those into debt here at Wales Comic Con. Um, but yeah, no, I, I got to meet you for work a couple of years ago uh, for a movie she was doing. And she was saying that there was there was plans in place for a third movie, uh, that she was on board, you were on board, and the the studio wanted to go ahead, but without Rob Zombie. Um, and that's kind of where it all fall, fall, fell apart. Um, yeah, that, that's where the, the brakes got put on. Yeah. You know, they shelved it. We were, we were getting ready to go. But, it, you know, I'm... I'm I'm kind of glad that I didn't tell you the truth. It's yeah, it seems like especially because of those the, the well, your Michael Myers, her Laurie Strode, the style of those movies. It's it's Rob Zombie. It's you cannot do right. a follow up to yeah, you can't do a third one of those movies without Rob Zombie involved because he's got such a unique um, aesthetic and approach to filmmaking. Yeah, exactly. So you know, and it it was it was a concern to figure out which way it was going to go in all of that and and so i'm glad it didn't mm. go any further um and on the other side of that derek people are still they still want more of your jason it's like everyone <laughs> still wants it's to this day i know obviously the, the 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 franchise itself is in limbo at the moment with the the legal battles between uh sean cunningham and, and miller it's all just so i don't know when we're going to get a friday movie again but what's what do you think of all this? And I, I, I presume you'd be open to it because obviously you're a massive Jason Voorhees nerd. <laughs> and and, and no, I mean that in a total, a total compliment. Yeah, no, thank you. Now, depending on who's involved, I, I mean, they, they, they've tried to get it off the ground uh, a sequel to that multiple times. There's been so many pitfalls and roadblocks. And now because of the legal battle with Jason being tied up, I, I'm just sitting back and I got my own stuff going on. Like, you need me, let me know. If not, you want to do other people, that's fine too. Like, as a fan, I just want to see more Friday the 13th films, like keep them coming because I'm a nerd. It's, I, I think anything, it's like if it was a, a TV series, a movie, a video game, because there is the video game, which is totally badass. If, if you've not played that, anybody out there, oh, yeah. play it uh, from Gun Media, which is so good. Um, it's just, yeah, that, that's, that's a franchise that has totally got the handcuffs on it at the moment, which is really sad to see. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I, I, it's, it's interesting also, it's fun like seeing different fan bases over the generations 
where like when the game came out, having a bunch of fans come over at cons who were very tiny, uh, like you know, like uh, not really old enough in my opinion to, to watch a Friday film, but the parents would be like, oh no, no, they don't know the movies at all. They just know the video game from, they know that the Jason's from the video game. So I thought that was really interesting uh, generationally how things change and adapt over time. Yeah, but then on the other side of that, it's like if they're, if they're not really old enough to watch the movies, should they be playing the video game where yeah, right. people okay. have their heads thrown through windows and decapitations yeah, and all this? Like, yeah, possibly not. Um, but just for, for, for both of you guys, as, as somebody that, uh, as people that are so synonymous with the horror genre in recent years, although obviously you have done other stuff elsewhere outside of that, the confines of horror, but what, what do you think it is that keeps people coming back to horror? Why is it always so popular? Like, like well, time, time honestly, is just staring through the you screen. Want to get about it? I, I, I believe it's because the root of all story is based on fear that we have story to let us know basically that either someone has it just as bad as we do or someone has it uh, uh, as, as worse. And so we can relate to it. But the, the, the fear factor, we, it spikes our adrenaline from a survival instinct. And so we, we have a, oh, there's a tiger in you know, the bushes. We have to be on alert. Oh, it, it's not real. It's not real. It's fun. But that, that we ride that adrenaline rush. So two part, it's that, that, that physical, almost like a celebration of life in my opinion, because if you get close to the death, the more you can celebrate and, and appreciate life. And that whatever it is, you're, it's comforting because whatever it is you're going through, we all have our own personal struggles in life, no matter what they are. And it gives us a release to go, Oh, either A, it's going to be all right, or oh, this is how they, this other person maneuvered through whatever uh, obstacles that they're currently uh, uh, troubling them. And they turn out okay. So, sorry, I got really like actory headed as two different sides of <laughs> how to explain. And it's, you know, it's a great, it's a great escape and a release, you know, from mm -hmm. your everyday life. It is, it is so far, hopefully, so far the extreme of what you're dealing with. You know, that it just, and, it, and it's like Derek says, it's that excitement, that rush, the, the, just the whole excitement of it. Mm. Well, what's, um, what would you say then? I mean, it's kind of like asking you to pick a favorite child or something, but if you could look at all the roles you played, is what, which is the one that brought you the most enjoyment, I guess, the one where you had a blast, whether it's, it doesn't obviously not horror, just whatever, anything you play where it's like, ah, that's the one. That's the one that makes me put me to my happy place. Uh, for myself, it, 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 though it sounds cliche, it's the most recent, but honestly, a swamp thing. The the emotional complexities of the character and him dealing with an existential crisis and trying to figure out who he was. Uh, before I got hired for Swamp Thing, I was doing a Q&A at, at a comic book, uh, uh, I doing a, a comic book convention. And I got asked, like, what's, you can play any character, like, what you played so much, like, what would you like to play next? And I remember going, well, I would kind of like to do, uh, like, I love, like, the classic horror monsters, like, with the Bela Lugosi, the Boris Karloff. Uh, and I go, I would kind of like to do, like, a, a, a Frankenstein, not necessarily Frankenstein, but something that deals with an existential crisis of what we are and delves into humanity to hit those peaks and valleys emotionally to, to because our bodies don't know when we're in that emotional state, if it's real or not. So we, we believe it's real. So I think it'd be a challenge to hit these different peaks and valleys as a character. Uh, uh, and a couple, like a month later, I got a call going, hey, they want to meet with, Warner Brothers wants to meet with you about doing a Swamp Thing show. I'm like, what? And once I read the script, I go, this is exactly what I was asking for in general. And somehow universally, it just came to me. So yeah, it's a very special role for me. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, it, it's it's really hard to pick. I mean, I I liked Compound Fracture. Um, I like, I, I mean, playing Sabretooth, playing Michael Myers, all of them. I like all of them for you know various different reasons. You know, um, I think there's only probably one film that I didn't have fun on, and I'm not going to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you I know, to see you bash it, just go off. Yeah, go, go wild. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you know, but I mean, I, I just I just love what I do. I mean, when I get to act and, and do stuff like that, I just I'm like a kid in a candy store. And just being on set is the most exciting, funnest thing for me, you know. 
it's uh, so I like them all for various different reasons. Yeah, I think with Saber Seed as well, you were obviously you're the first person to play that character in live action, and it was that was if you take oh, obviously Saber Tooth and, and, and Logan that rivalry, but if you take Wolverine out of the equation, Saber Tooth's pretty much the star of that movie and, and the second movie to a lot of people where it's like, God, look at that guy, and just the the look of it, the performance of it, it's yeah, and, and those two films, uh, so the first two films hold up so well to this day like how was that must that must have been really cool getting to play i mean well it depends were you familiar with that character beforehand or was it a case of oh this is a just a, a part i'm going to read for and, and then go back and, and look into saber uh, mythos i guess yeah no i mean i watched the cartoons and 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 all of that i wasn't all that big of a comic book reader because i was slightly dyslexic but um when I was originally, they were wanting me to do the stunts for, I said, I'm not a stunt man, you know? And then they go, well, how are you with high falls? I'm like, uh, not good. Not good. <laughs> yeah. No high falls, but, no fire. You know, That's it. They're the rules. They're the rules. Right. Man. You know? So then they ended up showing my picture to, uh, the stunt coordinator ended up showing my picture to Brian Singer. I went in, I then I did all my research. I got a ton of comic books. I even, for my audition, I even got fake teeth. So I would look more wow. like Tooth. What? And, I didn't know I, that. That's cool. Yeah. I, I so cool. Teeth. I poly gripped them in, you know, and I'm like, I, I remember going in there, I knocked on the door. I, I feel like a real nut job with these teeth. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I go, uh, I'm here to see Brian Singer. And kids typing on the edge of the couch just sitting up on the couch and he goes like this to me puts his hand up he goes just a minute doesn't even look up and i'm like oh you little and it, he goes i'm brian singer holy shit you're saber tooth and my audition was literally he there was a glass coffee table he jumped up on that coffee table i was like oh this is gonna end poorly he's he goes choke me so i choked him and, I, ah, and he goes okay good thank you and I was hired from that. That what? was my audition process. <laughs> That's yeah, absolutely not. That's and I'm like, but technically, you can tell the story in a, in a different perspective. You can say that I walked into the office, I asked where Brian Singer was, he put his hand up, and I choked him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know you. You got the joke. That. <laughs> You're right. Hashtag booked it. <laughs> by any means necessary whatever it takes so that was it yeah right. fight for your roles right <laughs> well, was there ever any talk of you coming back to that role at all because obviously the the x-men movies got they went a little bit timey-wimey and it all over the place and you get the the, the the back to the past with first class and yeah that they, was you know i was i was uh signed to come back for the second one and so was ray uh, but I think it was like till up till about two or three weeks beforehand. Then they just wrote us both out because they go, wait a minute, he's got how big of a contract? We only need him for two weeks. So then they ended up scrapping it. So I was like, ah, oh, damn. Well, the that same was team not told. Right. You know. So and then you know, it, and then the producers go their other ways in the other films. It's it, it happened. Yeah. So, Dude, I would love to see you, as a comic book nerd, I would love to see you do like a solo uh, uh, Sabretooth movie to do that and like let you sink into the character and, and push mm -hmm. you to the forefront. That would be freaking awesome. Yeah, that that would be. I, 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 I've always wanted to, to take Sabretooth to the next level, you know, because I mean, he was he was a, a good character in, in the first one, but it, they didn't explore him as much as they should have, you know, and it I just wish that I could have got a, a better you know, shake at it or whatever you want to call it, taking them to another. You need more. Yeah. You like a, like a, like a, give you a bigger piece of meat to chew on. Which what a, exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's easy. You, you, do, the, depth, you, you know? do that standalone movie and then you spin it from based on the comics where every Wolverine, every, every birthday Wolverines, Sabretooth tr turns up to try and kill him. And you spin that from Sabretooth's perspective as to why he does it. And, and, waiting every year to go and do it it's it writes itself 
There you go. That would be I, yeah. I, I'm like, let's do that. I want to watch that right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just trying to kill all his loved ones. It's it is. It's it writes itself there. Wolverine in. It's all about snow. You need to find a, a little cabin somewhere for Wolverine. Wolverine's a bit part player in this. It's all about save save Sue's perspective and and his mission every year. It's like I'm going to get this Logan this year. That that goddamn Logan. That Weapon X every year it writes itself. Easy. I I'm I, I, I'm, I'm on board. <laughs> I'm wasted. I am wasted here. Um, that's, that's, the only thing I, that's the only thing I could ever write. That's what my knowledge is very minute. Um, but uh, before we wrap things up, guys, what, what can you tell us about what you're uh, what you've got in the pipeline at the moment? Then, obviously, 2020 is a bit crazy. So, uh, projects yeah, all over the place. Put the kibosh on a lot of stuff. But um, I mean, I've got, uh, like I say, Jupiter's Legacy coming out. I'm not sure when it's being released, but uh, that's for Netflix. Uh, and I'm working on the uh, TV series, uh, The Last Spartan. <laughs> no, I, uh, 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 I honestly, I, I passed on work because of COVID and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I am, uh, if you need me, I'm watching a lot of movies. And I'm doing a new level of Sackboy. Might check out the new yeah. Cyberpunk video game. It looks I, pretty I, good, that. Yeah, it does look, I mean, I, I probably will never play it, but it looks very impressive. With yeah, the, totally. With, with the cheesy Keanu Reeves trailers that they have for it, where he's just like strolling down the street. Um, you oh, know, Keanu Reeves, yeah. Keanu Reeves, that's very Keanu Reeves. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, I love it. I love it. But no, no, right now, I, because of COVID, I passed another, so I'm not doing much at all, just training and preparing for when the uh, the floodgates open, we can go back to work and everyone can be safe. Yeah. Um, and I said there's a horror panel just to end it with what what is kind of your guys, your, your go to say, I don't know top three horror movies where it's like right i fancy something a bit devious um a, a, a bit devilish what can i put on what what are the recommendations you could throw out to the people tuning in here to, to, to devilish type of horror movies that we like just, in general but just in, in general yeah i, I threw devilish in there because it sounded clever and it, it, it was it wasn't meant to be uh like yeah those satan movies that philip the goat uh, in uh no um just any sort of horror movies that you go for like i don't know just a couple that you throw out there for, for people to watch uh, John Carpenter's The Thing. Uh, I freaking love uh, that. Uh, Evil, Evil Dead, like uh, Army of Darkness. Uh, not because I'm in it, uh, but uh, uh, Dead Snow 2. My, my wife and I just watched it again recently, just from Tommy Orkula. Yeah. Those Norwegian cats really understand the, the balance between violence and humor. And I'm like, ah, I'm, it's weird. Like, I feel like, imagine being a fan of a, of a film that you like, but also going, oh, yeah, I'm in it. I, I don't associate those two. So when I'm watching it, going, I'm like, oh, this is so, oh, it's not a brag thing. Like, I just really enjoy it because of blood and guts, but also the, the complete opposite of the humor that, that's added into it. Yeah, I totally agree with that. See, not not uh, Red versus Dead, that's though too, but about two or three days ago, I happened to just find myself re-watching the first movie. And there's the bit where yeah. uh, Martin gets his, he has to chop up his arm with the chainsaw. And it's like, oh, this is grim. Yeah. And he thinks, oh, that's it. That's okay. And then the zombie pops up out the snow and bites him on his, um, uh, whatever you want to call it. And it's like, oh, this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, it's genius. Um, just what you think that's, that's so the worst funny. of it. And then all, obviously, the, the, the Herzog brings up all the, the oh, yeah, for thousands sure. of undead and yeah. Um, yeah, great two movies there, Red, uh, Death Snow and Death Snow 2. So anybody listening to that, go and check those out if you've not seen those. Uh, Tyler, what's your your go-to horrors? Um, top two are uh, Jaws. I honestly thought you were going to say Halloween and Halloween 2 then. <laughs> when you said top two, it's like, top two are obviously Halloween and Halloween 2. Well, yeah, well, no. And then for TV series, you know, like The Haunting, uh, Haunting a Hill House, Haunting Bly mm. Manor, things like that that are on right now. Um, it, I, I just, I just enjoy watching a bunch of stuff and, and with this extra time off, that's all we do is we watch more movies, you know? Yeah. So it's cool. It's, it, I, I take it Bly Man is quite good because I saw the, uh, Haunting in the Hill House that was, uh, phenomenal, but then I've not got around yet to watching the Haunting in the Bly Manor. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it, it's not as scary as the other one, but it, it's still, it, it's good. You know, it's good. And I'm even watching the crown. Yeah. Really? Throwing that out there, yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, um, Canadian, you got to watch the crown. You know. 
I, I guess. Like, I've, I've, it, when I report on Netflix, it's like, recommended for you. It's like, no, I'm cool. I'm all right, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me get to that horror section or, or whatever. Or, or, We're yeah. already living that horror story over Yeah, here. it's like, I'll, I'll just go straight to like the horror section or F is for family. That's kind of my, 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 my little box of Netflix I go to. Um, but guys, this has been uh, absolutely brilliant. Um, thank you again so much for giving up so much time. This has it's been so much fun. I, I see our, our comment section is going nuts with lots of praise for you two guys who have been oh, on multiple awesome. occasions. Uh, multiple occasions you've been described as sweethearts. Oh, there what? goes their I will punch them under the face uh, parts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, how can people keep up to, to date with what you're, what you're going to be working on soon? And obviously, Tyler, your production company, Derek, whatever's on the horizon once COVID disappears. Uh, how can people keep uh, <laughs> keep a, keep a track on, on what's going on? You just stalk me on uh, on the internet, you know. It's <laughs> you know, Tyler Bain, uh, main main uh, you know, oh, people have figured out how to do it. So, <laughs> uh, uh, I, and Derek, the same for you. People stalk you on the internet. On mine, I guess you can go to <laughs> you can go to my social media pages, uh, my Instagram, uh, Twitter, or Facebook. It's all just my name is Derek Mears. Uh, yeah, I just got on social uh, on Instagram because of Swamp Things. So I'm still like, uh, I know it's been like a year or so, but I'm still like, how do you do this? Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> awesome. Um, that's a, a nice way to end it. So yeah, stalk Tyler and then find Derek on Instagram. Simple. <laughs> yeah, stalk um, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you, you, you've asked for that now. You've asked for that. Um, Jed, this has been brilliant. This has been so much fun. Um, it's been an honor, a, a pleasure. Um, and thank you for everybody who's tuned in. This, of course, is on uh, on behalf of Mind uh, to, to raise awareness and support what, uh, a phenomenal charity that's doing such great work during this most uh, tumultuous of years. But yeah, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Derek, Tyler, thank you again. And, uh, and we'll be back in a few minutes with whatever is up next. I believe awesome. And thank you everyone in the chat room for taking your time to listen to us. Yip yap. I uh, hope you guys have a good day. Peace.